Welcome back everyone to Tarantula Exotics. Today's video was originally supposed to be all about available feeders for tarantulas and then ranking them in a tier list. Unfortunately, this was easier said than done. And as you will find out from watching this video, I may have bit off a little more than I bargained for. That said, if you'd like to come along on this journey with me on trying to understand a tarantula's dietary needs, stay tuned. Yes, that is right, YouTube. Rather than putting a tier list in this video like I originally planned, this has turned into a mini documentary outlining my journey and finding what I thought would be a simple concept. Understanding a tarantula's dietary needs. The initial concept for this video would be to simply create a tier list ranking all of the available feeder options for tarantulas. However, I wanted to do this right. I did not want this to be an arbitrary ranking system, so I had the idea to find out what a tarantula's dietary needs would be and then use a feeder's nutritional value to then rank them accordingly. I figured a couple quick Google searches and then I'm all set. Easy, right? Well, I started out with the Google searches and looked up feeder insect nutrition chart. Easy enough, we see a whole bunch of different options come up and it is this one by the reptile report which I found to be the most comprehensive. As we can see by going into the link, We'll click on the larger version and here we see an outline of the species and then a ton of information on things like the moisture content, the protein content, the fat content, the fiber content, the calcium content, and the phosphorus content. So much information available right at our fingertips. My plan was then to use this information to of course correspond with what a tarantula needs. For example, is a high fat content detrimental to a tarantula? Is high calcium beneficial to a tarantula? Is high protein beneficial to a tarantula? All these questions I wanted to find out and then I would put together a ranking system for all the available feeders based on charts like this and then rank them accordingly. Step one was done, so all I had to do was another Google search and I should be all set. So I go back to the Google search and this time I type in what nutrients do tarantulas need? And here we can see a report here saying that diet nutrition the Chile rose tarantula, which is the first option, eats a diverse menu including grasshoppers, crickets, moths, beetles, cockroaches, and mealworms. And so I decided to click on this one thinking, okay, hopefully they break down the actual reason why they eat this. So I go into this and as you can see, there is not much here. Now there, it is said that tarantula is not fond of eating dead prey. It also is going to eat a dust prey with calcium and vitamin D supplements. Well, hang on a second. We know that we don't need to dust our prey items with calcium. I'm not exactly convinced that this is the best website to look up a nutritional value for tarantulas. Okay, so I go through here, nutritional diet, or tarantula diet. Okay, well, let's, let's check this one out. And again, strict insectivores, average size, such as crickets, mealworms, grasshoppers, june beetles, chikadas, and caterpillars. O okay but small frogs and toads or even small mice? Hang on a second. I've been told that small mice are not good for tarantulas. But why aren't they good for tarantulas? And why are all these items considered to be good for tarantulas? I'm used to being told what to feed a tarantula. I know that I can feed a tarantula crickets and I know I can feed it things like dubia roaches or mealworms or superworms and so on and so forth. But the big question is why can I feed them that? And the even bigger question is, am I feeding them the right mix of those options? And so for that reason, this isn't going to be acceptable either. Let's go back again. Well, here we have a post in the Arachno boards, tarantula nutritional needs. So I went to this one and started exploring. Uh, looks like uh, Jesus B had posted, I was hoping to start a discussion on the nutritional needs of tarantulas. Also, I was wondering if anyone could share a good recipe on dry gut load. Well, we see all these posts in here and I started scrolling through it and I'll kind of give you the TLDR version of this. And it's basically that, again, the diet Terry needs tend to be crickets or mealworms or superworms, but no real answer as to why it might be that. So I keep going through this and needless to say, long story short, I went through several pages of Google to see if anything on the internet would say what a tarantula's dietary needs would be. And finally, after hours and hours of research on the internet, I gave up. Not on the topic, not on understanding a tarantula's dietary needs, but instead on using the internet. 
So I turned to someone who I think is very well respected in the tarantula groups on Facebook and I messaged them directly. I figured if anyone knows it's going to be this person. So I messaged Vanessa Sarges, who you may know, especially from the Canadian groups here. And I, I asked her, I said, hi Vanessa, I'm currently working on an upcoming video, but I'm getting stuck finding any relevant research on the topic I've planned. You're the most knowledgeable person I know when it comes to tarantulas, so I thought I'd reach out and ask your advice. I'd like to highlight the various feeders available to tarantulas and compile a list of the best to worst on nutritional value. The problem is I can't seem to find what nutrients are good for tarantulas and which are bad. And I go into some examples, as I've already mentioned here. Uh, she does reply and then says, yes, you know, you have to give me a bit of time with this topic of debate for many, many years. I don't think this is any definitive source of feeder nutrient levels, but I vaguely remember one scientific paper floating around that might touch on it. So I reply back saying thanks, you know, and also mention that I actually reread the copy of the Tarantula Keeper's Guide, which many of you may know is, list is considered to be the Bible of tarantula keeping. It is an absolute must read for anyone who has tarantulas. But anyways, I read through it and there is actually no nutritional information on that as well. So she sends me a few links and I'll kind of skip going through the links, but the long and short of it is these links while highlighting some of the nutrients of the feeder items, which I've already found, they did not actually highlight the dietary needs of a tarantula. Um, so unfortunately I could not come across those and kind of moved on to my next step. So what was my next step? Well, my next step was actually to go into Gmail and email someone. Not just anyone though, some very well known and very reputable retailers here in Canada, Tarantula Canada. So I emailed Martin and Amanda from Tarantula Canada asking a similar question or phrasing the question a similar way to Vanessa. And I got this reply initially. Hello Rob, unfortunately this is something we honestly never looked into. So I'm afraid we are unable to provide you with any accurate information on the subject. And then furthermore, I was asking to use some other photos and a video, which um, they just wanted to know which ones. And anyways, skipping that. But uh, then I replied back with a little bit more detail and they res responded, you know, hello, Rob. Interesting. We never use superworms here uh, for animals. And this is not a problem we encounter. I mean, I might've had two or three over the 20 years. We only use crickets. My philosophy has always been that they are invertebrates themselves. I do not believe they need any extremely high nutrient content for their feeders. Something purely anecdotal, but I remember reading a million years ago that people who were feeding meat to their tarantulas were very unsuccessful breeding them. That means very little. But some used to give cubes of beef, and that would be a fairly high fat content. And so from this email, I was able to take away a few things. The first was that this was going to be much harder than I initially thought. The second, however, is that based on this information, I can kind of anecdotally just kind of put together the fact that high fat content might be detrimental to a tarantula's future in breeding in particular. But of course, there's no direct evidence of this. So I decided to continue on my search. After emailing Martin and, Martin and Amanda from Tarantula Canada, I decided to go one step further. Keep in mind, I've now messaged Vanessa, who is one of the smartest people I know in the Facebook groups. I've now messaged one of the smartest retailers I know, one of the most knowledgeable retailers in Tarantula Canada. And I decide we're not gonna stop there. So I go to what I thought would be the next logical step. And that would be to message an arachnologist. And here's his reply. Hello Rob, without getting into a lot of timely research to your query, I can tell you that a Theraphosid all invertebrates have taken millions of years to perfect their diet. For Theraphosid spiders, it's basically whatever they can subdue and is palatable. Unfortunately, in captivity, variety of diet is lacking. Some grossly so a constant diet of kingworms or commercially produced crickets. Feeding tarantulas invertebrate prey is better than pinky rodents. The protein content in mammalian tissue is very low compared to locusts, crickets, etc. Feeding pinkies or rodents to tarantulas is purely a show-off thing. And then he goes in to recommend a couple books, books like Butterflies in My Stomach by Taylor or Bugs in the System by Addison and Wesley, give a nutrient breakdown of insects. To me, the best book is former but out of print. Any references to the website where I might be able to find it. Repetitious diets cause molting and maturation problems as well as females producing low numbers of inferior, low numbers or inferior eggs. The best healthiest tarantulas I ever saw were by a guy long gone from the trade, Alan McKee, Al's Tarantula Ranch, 
who fed his crickets Heinz dry baby cereal that had a good variety of vitamins and nutrients, he then fed his tarantulas those crickets. He had the best breeding and specimens and reared offspring that I've not much seen since. Now it's breed them and flog them and screw what they turn out like. He finalized this by saying, no, there's never been a captive nutritional study done on tarantulas. In addition, one has to be aware of the most or wary of the most likely diet they tra the tarantula would get in nature. If it lives in the desert, semi-arid, rainforest, tree dwelling, large species, small species, then figure out the variety. Hope this helps a little, but bottom line is, no one has studied the nutritional health and needs of tarantulas. Now I got this email and I was immediately devastated that this project that I thought would take five minutes of research and maybe a couple hours of just having fun with a tier list has turned into this long, arduous process which has apparently concluded with there is no answer. If there's no answer, how can you do this tier list? But we dig deeper into this email and we notice one particular line. Feeding tarantulas invertebrate prey is better than pinky rodents, followed by the protein content in mammalian tissue is very low when compared to locust crickets, etc. So by taking that one line, can we maybe extrapolate a bit and say that the protein content could be important to a tarantula? Again, yes, I think we can somewhat justify that, but it is a bit of a stretch and unfortunately, we're not going for stretches here. We want hard evidence. So I'm about to give up on my journey on trying to find out a tarantula's dietary needs as it looks like this is the end all be all. I have contacted an arachnologist and he, even he says there has been no studies done. And just to give you a reference of who this is, I will give you a bit of background on him just taking from his Wikipedia page. He is a Canadian arachnologist with a main expertise toward tarantula spiders. West was born in Victoria, British Columbia. He has been interested in spiders since childhood and collected his first tarantula faunal palma utilenum at the age of 13. For, it goes further on, but the cool thing here, he's, he's been involved in collecting, breeding, rearing, and the photography of theraphosis spiders. Uh, but the really cool thing is uh, he's traveled to 27 countries to document and study them in their environment. He's been a host presenter and co-producer in several tarantula documentaries and has also described several new species. This is not you know, some fresh, freshly graduated arachnologist. This is someone who has a very long history in the industry and he is saying there's never been a study done. So I take his word on that, very highly respected. And, you know, I, I do want to give a very big shout out to Rick West, obviously Tarantula Canada from, for their input. And then of course, Vanessa for her input. Uh, but I'm not done yet. At this point, this is really when I gave up on the idea of doing that tier list and switch focus into doing the journey of understanding a tarantula's diet. And so I decide there's one more person I'd like to get involved in this journey, someone who I am a huge fan of myself personally. I watch their videos religiously. I think he is one of the most knowledgeable YouTubers out there when it comes to tarantulas. And so here we have an email reply from Tom's Big Spiders. I had contacted him similarly to the way I'd contacted everybody else with the same question. And here's his reply. Hello Rob, first off, thank you so much for the kind words. Hopefully I can save you a bit more time and aggravation. The reason you're having such a difficult time with this topic is because we have no idea what their nutritional requirements are. I was asked years ago to cover this topic for my blog and I gave up on it rather quickly. There is so little known about tarantula health as it is that we still don't even know what causes them to become ill or how to treat these illnesses. It's an impossible question to answer with minimal data we have on them. Now just that first line alone, obviously sends you know, this sense of dread over you, but also a sense of relief that it looks like the journey is finally over. If Tom couldn't put a video together on this, then I don't think I will either. But he does go on to give me, again, more information. Just consider human beings for a moment. We have obviously spent centuries studying the human body, nutrition, and health. Yet despite that, people still argue over what good nutrition is. One minute coffee is bad, the next coffee is good for you. Eggs are terrible because of cholesterol. Nope, eggs are actually a good source of protein. Low carb diets are the way to go. Your body needs carbs for health. The food pyramid keeps changing as we learn more about the human body. You get the point, even with all the research and experimentation, we still can't agree completely on what's good nutrition for humans. 
there's been little to no research on tarantula health and nutrition and anything that out there that is, is purely anecdotal. Considering how long they live, it would also take decades to any meaningful experiments on how varying diets might impact growth and longevity. Now again, we go into uh, a little bit more detail and there, there are a few lines I wanna kind of outline. Um, and in particular, there is one right here. This happened back in the day when folks were losing tea blondie to bad molds because many folks were feeding mice to their tea blondie due to the size of the prey item. This idea came around that the high calcium content of the mice bones were killing the spiders. In fact, the deaths could usually be contributed to dry or bad conditions. Now going back, you know, what Tom's really saying here is, you know, feeding mice to tarantulas probably isn't as bad as what we thought because of, you know, poor conditions back when they were trying to do this. But we go back to the arachnologist and he is saying, you know, we should never feed uh, mice to tarantulas because, you know, it's more of a show off item and they're, they actually lack protein. Uh, the protein content in mammalian tissue is very low. So it's interesting we have some kind of uh, contrasting responses here. And I thought that was very cool to, to understand that and to see there are various contrasts in this. So I do decide to look up more information on feeding mice, not that I ever recommend it, but I was curious. And this post here by a man named Stan Schultz. If you don't know who that is, I'll give you a hint. I referenced one of his famous works earlier on in this video. He is in fact the author of the Tarantula Keeper's Guide. So we go into this, and I'm not gonna go into all of this, but the long and short of it is, you know, this is really all about feeding mice to tarantulas and the outcome. And so here we have, you know, T. Blondie, this is, I'll kind of give you the too long to read version, but um, it, someone had fed of mice to the tarantula and then a short time later, the tarantula died during an unsuccessful molt. Um, and it goes into, you know, our, our hero is kind of the person who is being referenced here, like the death of the tarantula on its eating the mouse because the only remarkable thing that stood out in their mind was a struggle between the tarantula and the mouse. The assumption was made and the miss myth sprang into being like a big ugly toadstool. Again, there's a lot more here, and then it goes into a caveat, but nothing about tarantulas are that simple. They simply had far too, too much time to elaborate and fine tune their lives. When feeding mice tarantula, it is very important to feed only very, very young mice, babies or slightly older, and so on and so forth. So again, we have some more contradicting entries here, and I thought that was very unique. And so that was my journey. I wanted to share it with you guys. I thought it was very interesting. I think if you're gonna take anything away from this, as far as what feeders are best, your best bet is to stick with what's working. We've been feeding crickets. Most people in the States have been feeding dubia roaches and some have been feeding superworms for an extensive period of time. And so I think to a certain degree, we can roughly assume that whatever we're doing is working, but we should always be questioning, are the tarantulas thriving? And that's a question that we won't answer in this video, and we may not know the answer for a very long time, if ever. So that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun doing this journey, and I got to talk to some wonderful people. Obviously I got to talk to Vanessa and Martin and Tom, uh, from you, Tom, Thomas McSpiders. Uh, but f I think the most surprising part was getting to talk to an arachnologist about this and finding out just how little we know about tarantulas. Something we can always learn from and something I hope to continue learning on for myself going forward. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to share this experience with you guys. And honestly, that's gonna do it for today. So until next time, I will see you guys in the next one.